All right, people, we are here for the week seven recap of the FPL. Now, at this point, like I said in the last video, we had already secured playoffs. So this week was kind of like a, um, we don't want to show our cards too much because the, the team that we're facing um, is also like one of the um, top teams. And I was kind of feeling this like, well, probably going to face them in playoffs. So like, how do we want to play this? So we just decided to try to like mix up all of our tiers again. So this time I'm actually playing OU um, against the Captain Hylian. And I was like, dang. Yeah, so I'm actually playing against the Captain Hylian. So um, I was like, well, I haven't played OU in a while. So I just tried to bring the most standard, just like offensive team I could think of and just say, screw it, let's do this thing. So. They bring a nice and powerful Sun team versus me. I'm like, okay, that's respectable. Uh, I'm gonna just vote switch out here because I don't think you're going ro uh, Great Tusk on me. They actually reject butt. So I'm gonna protect see what this thing goes for. They do go for a nice little sucker punch <clears throat> as they go for the bug type libero. Um, out to Great Tusk, anticipating me to go for another volt switch, which I do. So they get that play right. Big Nigel. All right, they go for a knock, get rid of my lefties. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to Will-O-Wisp you since you stayed in versus me, buddy. So now this Great Tusk is kind of neutralized. Even its body presses won't be doing too much as I can just simply keep on hydro, hydro pumping, even the sun. We're going to stall out their sun. Big walking weight comes in, unfortunately, on the hydro. So now I'm in a not too great position. I am going to try to keep stalling out these, um, these sun turns. So now the Amoongus comes in on the Draco does a heck of a lot, but at least now there's no more sun turns. So I think I switch out here to try to get some region. Yep, no game because they shouldn't be able to do much to me. They do just get the sun right back up, which is pretty unfortunate though. I need to get rid of this pesky um, Torkoal. My great test is also defensive, I guess. As um, because theirs is burnt, I have an inherent advantage. Also, I'm starting off at near pretty much full HP. So gonna knock him off just to get rid of those leftovers just so that now the burn no matter what if I do nothing this great tusk is on a timer so um they go for EQ versus me the burn means they're gonna die in one turn no matter what they they see that they're gonna go out into this thing actually which is a little bit surprising I'm gonna try, I, I try to get a boost off versus them uh, I am slower that they probably saw that coming they knew that I was gonna rapid spin to get a boot a speed boost off versus them they're gonna try to keep it as a sack the Hydra Steam kill my Rotom. My Amoongus is at full, so I can take any hit they want to go for. Pretty much. Or not not full, I'm sorry. It got some region is what I meant to say. This thing is already burnt, so it can't take a spore. As now the sun is back up again for the full amount of time. I'm telling you, this sun, they, I've never seen so many sun turns in this game. So now the hat comes out versus the King Gambit. I only have one fallen ally. They are going to Terra Steel. I go for the Iron Head. Don't do a lot. As I do get a flinch on them, which is pretty unfortunate. I'm going to keep going. I go for the Kowtow now. So that flinch obviously sucked. I don't know. If they probably could have Mystical Fired and the Sun done a heck of a lot. I can't remember if I was AV or not. But um, the Terra Steel then made it to where my Kowtow Cleave. Well, it was going to do neutral either way. Yeah. So that really sucks for them, obviously, as they do get a, a burn. They do get a little bit of redemption because now their Pyro Ball burns my Great Tusk. So a little bit of justice, you know, a little bit of justice. As uh, get some rocks up, finally, so that this Torkoal can just keep on coming in and setting up the sun. The sun turns are running low, though, as only one turn left. As I'm going to Terra Grass here, as I know what I can do with this Volcarona in this position. Because if they try to go Torkoal again, they're going to give me another boost. So, yep, Torkoal comes in. It's going to take some nice rocks. As um, I know that if I'm plus two, I can do a heck of a lot to this thing in the sun. So I'm going to go for a flamethrower, easily take this thing out. Now that Volcaron is plus two, you can see why this thing got banned. As uh, that's what I'm going to do here. But it's legal at this time. So I'm like, well, I'm going to use it. I am going to use Volcaron to try to win this game. So I thought they might go for a sucker. They actually just go for a pyro ball. They get the read right. Good play on Hylian's part. As uh, now I can just go Pult though. They do go for the sucker. As uh, I know that I can live that as I go for a U-turn. Out into Big King Gambit over here. Yeah, this end game's a little bit tricky with the Cinderace now that they killed my Volcarona. Like I said, this, this game didn't really matter, but I just wanted to win just for pride's sake, just to say that I could go undefeated in the regular season. 
So, um, Amoongus, go, uh, they go for the flamethrower, do a heck of a lot. They do eventually take down my Amoongus. Now the sun is gone for good, which means that my Dragapult will now outspeed this thing and be able to hit a big Draco on him. Cinderace comes out, and I go for another Draco, and, um... I guess they thought I might switch into, out into that thing. I'm just going to take him out and secure game one. So, Jeeve is playing you. you. They've got a fair... Jeez! Goodness, I didn't know you were playing this. Good grief. The Alright, we're going to have to turn this thing up to fast right off the back, folks. So, go for the knockoff on the Halucha. Get rid of the electric seed. That does suck for this Halucha. As, uh... Already not a great start for Mayor Kriata because they've already had their Halucha uh, the electric seed is removed. As U turn comes out, yep, start poison and stuff, start getting up hazards. So they go for the taunt on the slow bro, this Halucha is not able to touch this thing. As it goes for the ice beam. Lissy comes in. Can we get some rocks, please? Yep, there we go. As there's some spikes to return the favor. As uh, gonna double down on those spikes. So unfortunately, running um, with this, well, are they all heavy duty boots or what? Get the get the pair on the discharge, as it is able to rest up though. Oh man, the rest Wochian. as um, is able to go for the sleep talk knockoff. Oh man, all right, so now you just rest up again here, right? Oh, they are fast asleep though. I thought that it would um, okay, they go for the sleep talk, but it's gonna die to poison. So now Pukurchin comes back in, able to get the train back up for the potential Iron Thorns and Iron Jugulus. As uh, Shadow Ball comes through, and you also get the terrain boost on the Sandy Sharks on its electric type moves. Um, I'm trying to weaken this Pukurchin, make sure it can't set up terrain anymore. Serene's going to try to rapid spend. Town Flame comes in, try to get a potential Flame Body. Doesn't look like it comes through, but now you can just defog since they got rid of your rocks. As Wo Chien comes back in, goes for a Thunder Wave and it fails. Iron Thorns, Wochian finally wakes up and is able to get off a nice little rest. But now this Iron Thorns is in a position where it can start Dragon Dancing on your team. So get rid of the loaded dice if it can't start spamming Pin Missile or um, Rock Blast for free at least, I guess. Still able to get off five hits even without a loaded dice. As uh, the spikes go up, Hurricane just takes out the Quagsire. It's got to be Specs. Look at that, 27% to Blissey. Goes for the Softball. Um, they anticipate the, uh, Flowboard coming in on the Power Whip, as now Pinkurchin gets up Electric Terrain again. Wochian comes back in here. Marikata is putting up, uh, as good of a fight as they can versus this stall team. Goes to the foul play, able to recover up. I, I didn't even know Pinkurchin got Pink recover. That's a pretty good move. Um, T-Wave on the Wochian as they go for the foul play. And there's the recover. Iron Jugulus comes back in. It is fully paralyzed. As now the U-turn comes out. Into Serena. There's the rapid spin. Oh, then there's the defog. Can we get a flame body? There's the flame body right there. So now Serena's burnt for the rest of the game. As the Earth Power comes through on the roost. Good play by Mayor Kayata. As uh, there's the Volt Switch. As they've really... Um, punch some holes into Jeeves' team. How many recovers does this dang Pinkurchin have left? Two, okay. So in theory, you can stall this thing out, I guess. Eventually, that's like one left, right? And then it can't recover anymore. But continuing to spikes up, that's the thing. Pinkurchin is very happy to get all these spikes up because now that the Town Flame is gone, that means those spikes are up for good. I don't know how many, I can't remember how many of their mons. Okay, well this one's not heavy duty boost, so that's great. Uh, for Maricarada. Not so great for our team, though. As T-Bolt comes through and takes out the Alola Mola. And it takes out the Slowbro. Oh, no. GG's. They were able to... I really thought Jeeve was having at the beginning. They were able to take out the Halucha. But the Sandy Shock's proving that it can best stall. That, um... That Earth Power play on that Roost was excellent. I guess it is a 50-50. I mean, staying in versus... Uh, Talent playing versus Sandy Shock's not uh, the best play. But then again, it also kind of just wrecks most of the team. So we're 1-1 one, one right now. As, um, what? They played two games? That's crazy. Okay, Black Archeops. Alright, let's see what happens here. 
So get up some nice little spikes as Rotom goes for the trick immediately. So immediately as Klefki is tricked. Goes for the light screen to at least be able to live a hit as Mudsdale now comes in. So now this Klefki is forced to switch out into something else. Goes on to Arboleva on a body press. Gets up the Seed Sower. They don't really have anything to take advantage of it though. As uh, Rotomo comes back in on a Giga Drain. That just still does a lot. As, um, what are they going to do here? They go for will o -Wist to try to get this thing down. Goes for Memento. What's the plan here, Black Archeops? What are we doing here? They're trying to go for the Jolteon. Very interesting. Is it going to be Terra, uh, Terra Grass for this Mudsdale? There's the Terra Grass. I'm going to be honest. I don't know why. <laughs> you see the Arboleva. You see the Memento to go into this thing. Um... I guess they still didn't see it coming, but maybe they just let it happen. So Jolteon is going to get up to plus two, plus two. Go for a play rough. Does a heck of a lot. I mean, wait, you're Volt Absorbed, so they can't really Thunder Wave you. Go for another play rough. It's a crit! Oh, come on! They couldn't let him use Jolteon? Oh, I'd be so sad. I think your Jolteon was sick. It was green. Oh, yeah, it was green, too. I figured it was Terra Grass. I had to make it shiny. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, that's tragic. They do have this, the Moxie Crocodile. They are actually Moxie. Alright. So, Volt Switch out. This thing is burned. As Tatsu comes in, it is Boots, and it's going to probably Rapid Spin here. Goes for the Terra Poison. There's the Rapid Spin. As uh, now you can eat that Dazzling Gleam for breakfast. As Cryogonal comes in. Gets up to plus two speed now. Cryogonal can take a lot of speed death hits. Yeah, look at that. Eats up that Draco from the Tatsu. And is just able to recover it back. So, it goes for the Nasty Plot. You can easily just go for Icy Wind, yeah. And then now you can recover again on... Oh, they go with a plus two. They're going for it. Yep, okay. Rapid Spin again. Okay, that's smart. So now they're plus one speed on the Cryogonal. As Crunch goes through on Klefki. Big Mabostiff. Able to go for the CC. Does not quite take it out, though. Crunch. Also not able to take out the Crook, though. So now you just keep spamming CC. So now you're Scar. Uh, obviously, Weavile can come in an Ice Shard. The question is, what do you go out into? Um, do you go Cryogonal? Do you go Knackle Stack? They actually stay in and sack it off. I guess they didn't want him setting up NSD. I guess that's fair. They figured that the Knackle Stack could come through. They want to come in and they want to Salt Cure. All right. So now Cryo comes in. As uh, Volt Switch comes through. And the Weavile is back. It could potentially go for a low kick or something like that. This is precarious. This is looking pretty precarious for folks. Goes to the body press. It is able to do a lot though. I'm just scared of this. I, they probably were more afraid of that Weavile setting up an SD and then just like um, low kicking the rest of their team. So that's why they were okay staying in and then trying to take down the Weavile. It does indeed go for the SD right now. As there's the freeze dry. Oh no, oh no, this is not good, this is not good. Another SD! As it goes, this final move is actually Icicle Crash. Gets rich! Oh man! Oh dang. Yep, SD Weavile at the end. That's what they were afraid of. Um, yeah, either way, Weavile was coming in clutch at the end. Kind of went in versus their team, honestly. I think I remember that. Someone made a comment that was like, if they don't bring Weavile, then this team sweeps. And they brought a Weavile. I, I think. It could be a false memory, but I think I remember that. So what are we looking like right now? One win, one loss, uh, two losses. So let's see what happens here. So Coolio and Inu once again. Um, this time they have a Haunter instead of a Rod. So, and they have a Zorark of their own. So, Giga Drain versus the Muck. Oh, I was watching this game, looks like. As uh, you turn out into Haunter. Unfortunately, are not able to get rid of those T-Spikes, but that's okay, though. So, they're able to eat up that Poison Jab real quick. Go for a nice little nasty plot on them. Even then, Muck still eats those death hits, though. So, let's see. 54%, that's a solid amount. They do go for the Haze. So at least they were to get off a big chunk before they hazed. 
as Redmond Frost comes out now. Go for a sub, excellent. So now at least you're behind a sub. Go for a big sludge bomb chip as they both switch out, get rid of the sub. Haunter is still in getting that black sludge recovery. As Sandaconda comes out, gets the poison, but you do have the uh, shed skin potential. Get some Rocky Helmet shit before it gets knocked off. There's the shed, the shed skin. Can we get some rocks? Yep, there's the rocks. They're probably also going to return the favor as they bring in the Lorantis. Is heavy duty boots, so you could try to remove them if you wanted to. Um, are they going to defog? Yep, there's the defog to get rid of those pesky T spikes. As uh, the Haunter was at least able to get chipped with a bit by the stealth rocks before they got removed. As uh, not too many switched into the Shadow Ball, they could try to get a potential contrary Spadef boost. Doesn't come through though. As the Terra Ghost comes in and that crit didn't matter. We saw it did 44% before with the 1.5 times that should kill. Uh, Dark Pulse comes through and is able to do a lot to the Sand Cod and not too many switch ins. Um, it would do 30% to Passimian as Santa Conda comes in now. And there's the U turn. No more Rocky Helmet. The Terra Ghost Haunter is in and it is going to start plowing through with Shadow Ball. As uh, Rodan Frost comes in, there's the Terra Dark on the uh, Zoroark. So now it's able to spam Dark Pulse even better. Can we get a potential flinch on this Appleton? Nope. As there's the Dragon Tail. All right. So what happens now? There's the big Sludge Bomb ship. Not able to take out the Appleton, but there's the Apple Acid. Does a heck of a lot and gets the Spadef drop guaranteed. Are they, are they gonna? Oh, they they stand. They sack it off. I thought they might go Sandy. But they didn't want to risk the Shadow Ball. In comes Passimian safely on the Electros. Probably going to kill this thing. Yep. Knock off the AV. As now Scyther comes in. And this is a legitimate Scyther. They're able to Aerial Ace with the plus two. Very nice. Takes the Mach Helmet ship. But now you can Quick Attack, right? No Quick Attack. But this Passimian doesn't look like it can hit it. So going to Aerial Ace again. And, um... You do actually outspeed the Haunter. So this Passimian is just kind of coming through. I mean, this Passimian can't do anything. This Scyther is coming through, folks, at the end. Does not have anything to hit this thing. Had to chip it down as much as it could. Try to go for a knockoff, and it wasn't enough. And the Scyther clutches the game. So, uh, one win, one loss, two loss, two wins, folks. This is a tough week. And this is this game. This week doesn't even matter for playoffs. We're just we're just playing just to play. So Bible Man and Little Cup. They've been pretty good in Little Cup this entire time. So Akito approves. Gets the poison right off the bat. As they go for a nice little rapid spin, anticipating. Um, thankfully, rapid spin is able to remove the T spikes as soon as they go up. Liquidation, huge damage, as uh, unfortunately now because of that poison, they are going to leave that toxic spike up. But you can absorb it, no problem. No problemo. Get the Ancient Power, no boost. Did you go for Water Pulse? Almost takes it out. Another Ancient Power, can they get the Omni Boost? No Omni Boost, unfortunately, for Bob Man. As Larvesta comes in on the Usain Bolt, the, um, the Tentacool, or the uh, Toad School, my bad. As a... Uh, Goes for the floor, but it takes a heck of a lot of uh, recoil. Flame Charge comes out, gets the speed boost. As Destiny Bond goes off, goes for Facade. Now the Flamethrower, so that now they can take him out with a nice little U-turn. Excellent. As now Larvesta is back in, folks. So, Gets the Toxic Debris up, but now you just easily switch out into your Glimlet. Get rid of that T-Spikes. Now there's no more risk of it. There's only two Mons left. This is an 11-turn game, and we're already... <laughs> like, just Mons dying left and right. All right, go for the Encore versus this thing, so it's forced to keep spamming Hex. As nice Sunny Day. Very interesting. What are they trying to get? Oh, they have the Capsa Kid. The Capsa Kid. See, this is why some of these Week 7 games are so interesting, because you get Mons that you wouldn't normally see. So now the Bullet Seed is coming through. With the Chlorophyll, gets all five hits. I don't know if it's loaded dice or not, but you know, that's pretty clean. Go for Zen Headbutt, do absolutely nothing, but you do get a flinch. This is insane. Miss the next one to get a bit of justice. Tailwind up, so now you get the Wind Power Charge. As it goes for Protect to try to stall out that Wind Power Charge. Um, is it still charged up? I don't know how long that lasts. Is it until it uses its next move successfully? Or is it just like it's next special moves? So, um, 
get the Brave Bird. And now you go for the Volt Switch. Get some more chip as Larvesta comes in. The Terra Water on the Flare Blitz and able to take it out after stalling out all those Tailwind turns. And that's going to be GG's folks. All right, so that's our third win. So now we come in with Akari versus Joran in national decks, bringing a very similar team as last time. They brought the Garkanakle over the Gliscor this time, as well as a Tornadus uh, Therian. Uh, Terra Steel immediately. They don't want to take a potential Draco. All right, as Garkanakle comes in on the freeze dry, they might try to go for a Draco here themselves. I'm not sure what they are. That seemed like expects. I mean, freeze dry doing 35% to a Garganacle. But I mean, Garganacle is mainly defensive nuts with that. So, Zen Headbutt, that looks like banded damage to me. This is just a very powerful team by Joran. Going for those Zen Headbutts, doing 23% to a Ferrothorn. Insane. As Volcanion now comes in, and it does get Leech Seeded. So, what happens here? Scizor comes out as Garganacle comes in. And goes for the Mega, and U turns out. In comes the Hoopa on the Iron Defense. As goes for the Hyperspace Fury, does not do anything, gets the defense drop, and the Body Press. Yup, that should take it out at minus one with a plus two Garganacle. Alright, Volcanion now comes in. Terra Water on the Steam Eruption. No burn, let's go. I was holding my ref so we wouldn't get burned. Alright, now you just Body Press here. Alright, but Glasscore is able to come in though. Ooh, the Salt Cure. Nice play, nice play. Alright, let's get the Poison off. And there is the Taunt, as it can no longer Iron Defense. The Salt Cure, um, it seems like it's getting slightly more with Toxic Heal or Poison Heal than the Salt Cure. 13%. No, it's doing the same. I guess 12.5%, 12.5%. Um, there's Protect, gets the Poison Heal. You are continuing to be Salt Cured until you switch out, though. As the uh, Gliscor is perfectly content just staying in here, getting off a of Toxic. They might switch out now, though. They actually go for a Protect just to get a little bit more chip on the Tornadus. That is fair. Just Gliscor doing what it does. As he turns out now, into the Clef on a Taunt. Gliscor continuing to just stay in versus this thing. As uh, bring back in the Torn with the regen. We might have to pick it up to fast, folks. Right, so Fred comes out now. So yeah, you use U-turn like you did before. Out into Ferrothorn on the freeze dry does so much damage. That's got to be specs, right? Crit, yes. I mean, come on, dude. Doing thirty-seven percent, forty-eight percent to a Clefable. I mean, it's a seventy base power move, folks. All right, Tornadus comes out. As now Tapu Koko is in. Tapu Koko is in, folks. Great Tusk comes out on the Dazzling Gleam, immediately goes down. Clefable is able to knock off this thing, type of duty boots at least. Just to try to do something to get back in this game. It's gotta set up some rocks, it's gotta salt cure, it's gotta do something. Volt switch out on the Dragapult as the Electric Train just went down. Will O Wisp on the Volcano is not gonna come through though. As Garganap comes back in on the Sludge Wave. Gliscor is able to come in and go for the Salt Cure. As now, and now what do you do though? It's, it's new, you're at least preventing it from getting more recovery. Um, you can go for a little Hex. Oh, takes out the Gliscor, let's go! It's using its own Poison Heal against it. As Sizzler is once again able to Bullet Punch versus Akari. Poor Akari having to just continually face off against this Mega Sizzler in every um, game they do bullet punch just able to come through and clean up all right this time the scissor got his kills versus akari or got the complete sweep all right so um i think that's uh one win one loss one loss one win uh wait did we already win one two three no no it's three three folks um is this game one? I believe it is, right? Yep, game one. So we have Nick Nom versus Sandy Sims. So Orthworm versus Gyarados. Clearly a gentleman's match here, as uh, it is the last week. They do have a Palafin and Sheen Pal in the back. They're going to lead off with these two to get the plus and the minus. I've never seen this be able to work out. Although they are plus plus. I don't know if they meant to uh, have a minus Mon, but you know. So go for the Overdrive and the Shedtail. Bring in the Dragonite. Protects on the Volt Switch, that's fair. 
as Terra Grass comes through, Terra Blast able to not do anything to that Dragonite, as it still has its multi-scale active with the sub up. You've never seen anything like this, folks. All right, goes for the Dazzling Gleam, takes out the sub, gets Gyarados down a little bit, goes for Protect on Chaos, the um, thing, go for Protect, try to take out this thing, but it's not able to. Four times super effective Volt Switch, and Ampharos will take out the Dragonite as Chien Pao now comes in. As Fortamane comes in. Let's see what happens here. Terra Ground, Ice Spinner, able to survive and hang on. As the Terra Ground um, at least made it able to survive, because if it wasn't, it would die. Alright, Protect on Grilled Cheese over there. As Dazzling Gleam should take out the Ampharos, as all that's left is this Roaring Moon, which will simply die to a Moon Blast. Excellent. Alright, going into week two now, or game two now. So, let's see what happens in this game. So we have Orthworm Gyarados once again, as this time they decide to go a little bit more serious. They're going to bring the Palafin. Alright, switch out into... So now this time, because of the Intimidate, very interesting that uh, they get the speed boost this time because their speed is no higher than their attack. So they get the Thunder Wave off to paralyze this thing, go for the Shed Tail, bring out the Dragonite, get a little bit of recovery with the Citrus Berry, into the Fluttermane this time. Yeah, Fluttermane looks much better than Dragonite. So this time they go for Protect, as they go for the Ice Spinner, able to prevent that from going through. Grilled Cheese gets paralyzed. Uh, Diego is going to get chipped. Throat Chop goes through. They cannot... Um, uh, because that speed, that's so interesting. Oh, because they went for the tail one. That's why they were able to be faster with the paralysis. Um, so this Roaring Moon is able to come through. As, yep, you gotta try to protect, to try to save your Flood Man. Uh, try to outlast this tail one, because after that you will be faster. And, yep, there's the para. So, uh, it breaks through the paralysis, unfortunately. So Flood Man goes down as the Waterfall is able to take out the Grilled Cheese. Now it's Palafin plus Amoongus. Amoongus could be tough. They are going to Dragonite stuff. You gotta watch out for this thing going for the... Ooh, the taunt comes through though, so it's not gonna be a Spore. That's great. Orthmorn comes back in. Jet Punch removes the multi-scale. As goes for Thunder Punch, just able to immediately take out Azor Hero. As Pollen Puff, there's nothing in the Pollen Puff. As EQ heals the Orthmorn. I didn't even think about that strat in VGC. Um, body press doesn't do much. Pollen Puff is able to chip it down some more. Uh, now it can go for Spore, though, is the thing. But it seems like, um, I guess they know that the end is near. So they decided just to, you know what, I'm going to just call it here. And uh, Sandy Sims ends the game there. So we do technically win. Uh, or not, not even technically, we just flat out win week seven. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter for the overall um, standings. Or maybe it does affect the standings, I guess. It just didn't matter for us whether or not we made playoffs, so... We made playoffs and we won week 7, so... At the end... Oh, spoilers. So at the end, where did the Fossil Fighters end their regular season? It was actually like a three-way tie here with the Legend of Larry, who had only lost previously in week 2, and the Unovan Elites, um, who we'd lost to before as well. Um, I think in week one, but um, we all had two losses by the end, and so we were able to secure playoffs with the edge runners just making it as well with three wins and uh, or four wins and three losses. So that's going to be it for that, and I'll have uh, playoffs in the next video. Bye bye.